So as chair of the awards committee, it is my distinct honor to be able to present this award, the James Barrett Brown Award for the best publication in plastic surgery in the previous year. Uh, I want to thank my committee, the awards committee, who uh, went through dozens and dozens of uh, papers, read through them, uh, analyzed them, scored them, and uh, helped us come up with uh, those to present to, uh, to the membership. So the James Barrett Brown Award uh, was established in the memory of James Barrett Brown, past president of the association, and it is presented annually for the best plastic surgery related paper published during the previous calendar year. The selection is made by the members of the association from articles published in the Journal of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery and the Annals of Plastic Surgery. This year we did it a little bit differently. So we opened it up to all medical publications so that this award is truly the best paper, best plastic surgery paper in the world. Uh, and we did that through involving the membership. And as you recall, in January and early February, you were all asked to nominate best papers from last year, and many, many people did. Uh, the awards committee took all of those, as well as the top 20 viewed publications in PRS, and uh, read them all, reviewed them all, ranked them all, and came up with the top six that we presented to the membership for voting. And I was pleased to see that of the top six, there were three that were not PRS. Uh, one was from Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which is uh, second only to nature in terms of its impact factor, one from Aesthetic Surgery Journal, and one even from uh, an e-publication, e-biomedicine, as well as three PRS papers. And from those, the membership voted, and there was good uh, participation by the membership. And the, uh, the clear winner uh, was this year's winner, uh, Dr. Anand Deva, MD, who is uh, a plastic surgeon on the faculty of uh, Marquery University in Sydney, Australia um, for his uh, paper, um, Bacteria Biofilm Infection Detected in Breast Implant Associated Anaplastic Large Cell Lymphoma. And I'll just show his uh, co-authors here. This is a multi-center study. And just uh, say that because of the, the involvement of the membership this year, looking at all the papers throughout the world uh, and the early uh, timing of the meeting, Dr. Diva could not make it from Sydney, Australia, but um, uh, very fortunately, he made a video of uh, his presentation, and we will share that now. I'm delighted today to be with you, albeit in a virtual sense, to accept the James Barrett Brown Award for Best Paper in Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery for 2016. It was with some surprise that I opened an email from your Vice President and Chair of the AAPS Committee to announce that we had, in fact, won this prize. And so I want to deeply and sincerely thank, obviously, the committee, the AAPS, and the membership for first nominating this paper and secondly voting it and um, for giving us this uh, prestigious award. Together we've built up a considerable body of work around surgical infection and in fact we have 15 years of experience using both in vivo and in vitro models that look at the issues of what happens when patients undergo surgery and interact with bacteria. I have to acknowledge the great work of my co-chair, Associate Professor Karen Vickery and our tireless postdoc Helen Hu and they share with me in this award as well. We do have a great research team at Macquarie University and at MQ Health. We are committed to translational research, which is bringing uh, research from the lab directly to patients at the bedside. And it goes to show how much you can actually achieve when you have great uh, collegiate collaboration between surgeons and scientists. And I want to encourage all of you interested in research to pursue this goal. So let me, let me in this uh, next few minutes share with you the paper and the research findings. We are all aware of the association between breast implants and ALCL, and this association has now been confirmed. We've been interested in breast implant infection for some time, and those of you may be familiar with our work linking chronic infection around breast implants to contracture. And when we began to look at ALCL, we found that there was an issue with textured implants which seemed to be overrepresented in patients who present with this disease. And so we've generated an extended infectious hypothesis, and let me walk you through that now. Essentially, when breast implants are placed into a patient, they can either become contaminated through the site of the incision, through skin flora, or from endogenous bacteria within the breast, 
and perhaps also from blood-borne bacteria further down the track. What's clear from our work is that once you have a uh, infection, a biofilm infection surrounding the implant, that this begins to generate a host response and in some cases can then lead to contracture. Our thinking was that perhaps this inflammation produced by bacteria may in fact trigger both proliferation and transformation of lymphocytes and that may well lead in time to the development of this lymphoma. Our theories are not unique. Uh, there is a, a quintessential model of bacterial infection leading to lymphoma in Helicobacter pylori. Uh, and so we were thinking along the same biological pathway. The study we did was truly collaborative. We managed to secure 26 samples from all around the world. And I acknowledge the collaboration from the MD Anderson Cancer Center, from the University of Southern California, from the Peter Mac in Melbourne, uh, that helped us uh, get these samples. And we had uh, three samples initially, interestingly uh, collected from the contralateral non-malignant breast. We compared these ALCL samples uh, with samples taken from patients with high-grade contracture, 62 samples, and we labelled these the non-tumour contracture group, NTC group. And we performed detailed analysis to look for bacteria both using uh, DNA technology, using imaging, and using uh, immunocytochemistry. Uh, the cut to the chase, what we found uh, was that the ALCL samples had very high levels of bacteria. You can see here that it's 4.7 4 by 10 to the 6 bacteria per milligram of tissue in the tumour samples, compared with 4.9 by 10 to the 6 in uh, the non-tumour capsule cells. What was really interesting is that when we looked at the breast samples from the other side, there was a significant order of magnitude less bacteria, pointing to some form of threshold for inflammation. Here is uh, uh, the image taken from one of the samples and you can see that uh, label A is the tumor cells, ALCL cells, label B are the bacteria within the sample and label C is the polysaccharide coating that uh, protects bacteria from, uh, from attack. We found bacteria in all the samples uh, of ALCL um, and interestingly they also found bacteria in the high grade contracted samples as well. What you can see here, which is interesting, is that when we look at the types of bacteria detected using DNA technology, we found an unusual cluster of um, uh, gram-negative bacteria. You can see that pink cluster on the left-hand side of the slide compared to the usual staphylococcal bacteria that we see in the non-tumor uh, samples. And what this shows to us is that the types of bacteria within ALCL are slightly different. And certainly the gram-negative predominance is something that we're currently investigating and are looking to see if this has significance in terms of interaction with the host response. So the question that we've uh, raised, I guess, from this research is, are bacteria implicated in causing ALCL? And at the moment, I must say that we have a very strong association, but to prove causation will be difficult because this is a, essentially a rare tumor and we have other things and factors that come into this. The implant surface we think is important and obviously the host genetics may also play a role. But there are growing bits of evidence that are implicating bacteria and their role in genesis of ALCL. Firstly, we see textured implants predominate to date in all patients with uh, this disease. We have shown before that textured implants grow much higher levels of bacteria as compared to smooth implants. We have shown also that these high levels of bacteria on implants cause a high level of lymphocyte stimulation, pointing to a direct link between the bacterial burden and the host response. We have seen that when we grow ALCL cells in the laboratory that they're dependent on inflammatory mediators to keep them going, suggesting an inflammatory cause. We of course now have shown that in ALCL tumour specimens there are high levels of bacteria. We also have shown this shift towards gram-negative bacteria which is very analogous to the story in Helicobacter pylori which also happens to be a gram-negative. When we see ALCL and where it occurs around the world it tends to occur in clusters which once again points to a likely infective source. And some work by my colleague Marshall Caden in Boston has shown likely pathways through bacterial superantigens and stimulation of T cells. So there certainly is more work to come, which we're doing, which will uh, show the link between bacteria, implants, and patient genetics in the genesis of this disease. As of today, our working hypothesis is one of a unifying hypothesis. This has been put forward by myself and Miles Prince from Peter Mac. And let me take you through what we think are the factors that go on to cause this, this tumor. So we start here with a breast implant, a textured breast implant, which uh, for whatever circumstance becomes contaminated with bacteria. We have a patient with host genetic factors 
that then is in the, into the mix. Along comes the patient's T lymphocyte. The T lymphocyte then undergoes a polyclonal proliferation as a result of the bacterial antigens. With time, monoclonal cells develop within this polyclonal response. And in time, one of these cells can transform into malignancy. The findings, once again, reinforce the importance of in preventing infection on breast implants. And this grows into a huge body of work that we've um, described over many years, showing the importance of good technique. This has been summarized in a, a publication in 2013, and we, we talk about the so-called 14-point plan. Based on evidence, specific steps that surgeons can take to reduce the levels of contamination. And we believe now more than ever that this 14-point plan has become uh, quite important, not just in terms of preventing contracture, but potentially reducing the risk for patients with ALCL. And certainly this is something that we as surgeons can control. I'm encouraging all of you to go to our website, saferbreastimplants.org. This is uh, uh, in partnership with MQ Health that promotes education of surgeons and is a repository for information on not just the techniques but also the evidence building to implicate bacteria as a cause of um, poor outcomes following breast implant surgery. Um, one step further, we have now a pledge for surgeons to take and I'm encouraging all my colleagues to take the pledge, not to follow the 14 point plan to the letter, but to accept that contaminating breast, uh, trying to reduce contamination of breast implants should be a focus of all surgeons using implants going forward. Um, so uh, I'm sorry once again that I can't be there in person, but, one, uh, but from the bottom of my heart, I would really like to thank you uh, for recognizing our, our work um, and hopefully uh, it will be a springboard for much more work to come from us. For those of you who have questions or want to contact me, I've got my email on the slide, or if you like, you can follow my Twitter account where a lot of the real time information on our research findings is broadcast. Thank you once again. Ooh.